Alright everybody, so today I'm going to make a video giving some info on how to find and program a remote if you have an old Sears garage door opener from the 1980s that has one of these wall buttons with the two buttons to run the door. So uh, the original remote would look something like this and mine works as you can see. But if yours for whatever reason isn't working um, or you need to find an extra remote or you just plain don't have a remote, this video is going to show you a few different options that you can get. So uh, the way this radio system works, uh, the receiver is built into the wall control. It's going to be on the back. So let me see if I can get this off with one hand. There we go. If we take a look at the back of this receiver here, you can see that we have nine dip switches with plus zero and minus positions. Now the first remote that I have is a LiftMaster model 61LM. Now this remote was recently discontinued, but you can still find a lot of these online on eBay or Amazon. You could even get them used for pretty cheap if you wanted. And this remote runs on the same type of coding system. As you can see inside the remote here, we also have nine dip switches with plus zero and minus positions. Now the receiver is upside down. So it's in order to program the 61LM, all these dip switches need to be matching. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to hold them so that they're the same orientation. And we're just going to set these dip switches in here to match the ones on the receiver. So if I move this first switch, is going to be these first two are going to be in the zero position. Okay, and then we've got a minus another zero, another minus, then uh, which one am I at? Number four is a plus, then we have a minus, a zero, and a minus. So just look again and make sure the dip switches are all the same. Let me put the cover back on this remote. And I'm going to put the cover back on the receiver. And now, assuming you said the dip switch is right, when I use this remote, it's going to run the opener. <clears throat> so like I said, they don't make this remote anymore, but uh, this is a good, cheap option. You can get them used, you can get them new, whatever. But these remotes will work with these old receivers. So the second type of remote is one that you can still buy today. Uh, this is, and that would be the LiftMaster Model 811 LMX. So this is a current day remote, it is a dip switch remote, and this one is programmable, meaning it has the option to, it is backwards compatible to older dip switch technology, so it will be backwards compatible to this receiver. Now if we look inside this remote, we have 12 dip switches inside this one. In our case, and these ones only have a plus and minus positions, plus would be on, minus would be off. Now, in our case, we have nine three-position dip switches, so, we're, so we only need to adjust one through nine. It doesn't matter what position 10, 11, and 12 are in. Now, if you're programming one of these remotes, you are going to have to come to your receiver and make sure that none of the dip switches are set to the zero position, since this remote doesn't have that. Now, I've already gone and I've set the dip switches in the receiver all to the on position to match this one. Now it is not advisable to put all your switches in the same position. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. As you can see, even though our dip switches are matching, this remote is not currently working and that's because we need to put this into learn mode so that it can get to the right setting. If you look inside the remote there, we have a tiny little blue button. Uh, that's a program button that's going to allow us to change the frequency of the remote. Now. What you're going to need, you're going to need to get a little screwdriver. Where did mine go? Here it is. So let's see if this will fit in there. But you need just a little bit, a little tiny screwdriver to push that blue button. Let's see if I can do this. Nope. Um, maybe this clip will work. That's not going to work either. Hold on. Maybe a little nail will do the trick. I might need two hands. Hold on. Let me do this with two hands, guys. All right, so I pushed the button, and now you can see that yellow LED is on. Now what we need to do is we need to push 
this button three times to set it to the frequency for this. And I believe the opener will run on the third press if you did everything right. So one, two, three. Maybe not. Unless I, again, unless I did something wrong. And then you're going to push that program button again and the LED will go out. So now you can put your cover back on and let's see if I did this right. I guess I did not. Hold up, let me just check these dip switches in here. Make sure I did set them the right way. They're all on plus. Maybe you do need to slide those three dip switches down. Hold on, let me put you on pause here. All right, so whatever re for whatever reason, I can't get mine to work. Uh, mine is an earlier one, and I think the early ones had some kind of glitch to them that made them not work quite right. But these remotes are compatible with the same dip switch technology as this one is. I mean, it comes. I mean, you just follow the steps I showed you. You match up your dip switches, and then you push that little program button. You hit this button three times, and then it should be programmed after the fact. Now the last option we have, and I need to change the dip switches in this receiver back here real quick. Um, hold up, let me put you on pause again. So the third option you have is the LiftMaster 892LT. They also make a four button version, model 894LT. Uh, these will be good if you have multiple doors that you need to program your remotes to. Uh, the only thing is to program this remote, you will need a working existing remote. So to program this one, there are no dip switches inside of this remote. So what this remote does is it's going to clone. Sorry about that, that's my stupid furnace. Okay, so now that that's finally done, so what you what you have is this little learn button again. So to clone a remote, what you're going to do is you're going to push that learn button and that red light's going to turn on. Now what you're going to do and I'm just going to lock my receiver so my opener doesn't run in the background. You're going to push and hold the button on the remote until, on the existing remote, until this LED starts to flash. And there you go. Now, we're going to pick whichever button on this remote we want to program to our opener. So we're going to push this button here. And now, you push your little learn button again. To exit programming mode. I'm just going to put my car back on. Let's unlock this and test it out. And there you go. So there are still options out there to get remotes for an old Sears opener. Um, so hope this video helped you guys out. Uh, sorry this one didn't work but they've got I think mine might have a problem because the early ones had some kind of weird glitch on them but uh, you know, just follow the steps I showed you, and it should work. And, you know, they come with instructions, too. So, uh, if you guys have any questions, please let me know, and I'll answer them uh, as best as I can.